All right, guys, and welcome to today's video. We're taking an in-depth look at two key exercises when it comes to building up your mid delt. Now, this personally is an area which I want to focus on in terms of my own physique. And who better to help me with this video than the one, the only, Ben Pakulski. If you don't know who he is, I highly recommend you check him out. He's actually put me through a pretty horrendous leg workout around about this time last year in Dubai. So if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you watch it. But back to the video. Roles are reversed here. He's going to coach me. He's going to improve my form as much as possible and I'm going to shut up and listen to what he has to say. So throw your feet up on the platform there Mike. I want you to shove your lower back into the pad and what we're going to do is we're going to assess where Mike, uh, Mike's insertions are. So looking at his humerus he has this, this point here. So if you look at all the heads of the delt they come down and insert in this one common point. So go ahead and lift your arm up so they can see. Good. So if we just draw like a little mark, an imaginary mark on Mike's shoulder, it's right about there. So Mike has a desire to have bigger and better shoulders. So to do that, we have to look at, okay, if that's his insertion point and he wants to build, let's say this lateral aspect of the delt, we literally would draw a line between the, uh, the origin of the muscle and the insertion of the muscle. And if we drew a straight line through that, we want the resistance to be directly in line with that head of the delt. So if he wants to train his lateral delt, that's probably his best arm position to do it. So if he's doing a side lateral raise, we wanna make sure that what's on top and what's in straight alignment with that resistance and that insertion is that particular head you're trying to work. So if he wanted to work maybe the more the back side of it, maybe we just change the angle a little bit, change the angle a little bit. Right, now, so now we're working more of the back side of it. Just kind of manipulating his body position and the internal and external rotation. So if he were to externally rotate, now you guys will see this front head is kind of on top and he's gonna work a lot more that front head. If he internally rotates a little bit, now that lateral head's on top. And if he leans forward a little bit, now we kind of have the back side of that root up. And it's really that simple. So as Ben mentions, you need to maintain that target area of the delt on top at all times. And whilst you're doing this set, you need to make sure that you're not swinging backwards and forwards. You need to ensure you're not creating any momentum. You need to ensure that you depress the scapula. And don't let your trap do too much of the work. And you also need to really try and visualize or think about lifting that weight up through your elbow. So you lift the dumbbell up with the elbow, not trying to think about lifting it up with your hand or with your wrist. So for Mike, if he builds his, for him to build his delts, it's just a matter of doing a lot of it, right? So his form is perfect. Now we don't really need to focus on, hey Mike, we need to improve your form, we need to change your setup. He's got it. It's just a matter of volume at this point. So what does volume look like for someone like Mike? Well, I'd probably do this exercise for six, eight, or even 10 sets per workout. And then I may do another one for side delts because this is, as you can see, firing his entire delt. And I think a lot of people are afraid to do a good amount of volume, but if you followed our stuff before, you'll know that um, doing one exercise and doing a lot of it is way better than doing 10 exercises that you do poorly. So we know he's a master of this one. Do a lot of it. And one thing you really need to try and focus on when doing this exercise is to focus on contracting the muscle at the very start of the movement and trying to make it as difficult as possible for yourself at all points of the range. Good, now right there, so it's contracted, right? Most people can't do that. So if you can do that and use that contraction to create motion here, how much weight do you think you would lose? If it was like, rather than throwing it, it's like I'm yeah, actually using contraction. Use lightweight. Right, but that's the weight that the delta is actually using, right? And, and so people don't get this stuff is, so if I have a four kilo number, the only time this kilo actually is four pounds of, or four kilos of resistance is when it's not moving. So if I do this, it's pretty obvious that on the way up, it's getting less and less and less. There's a point here where it's not, there's not imparting any force. And as it starts coming down, it's accelerating, so it's imparting more force. Does that make sense? And then as I land, as I catch it, it could be 20 pounds of resistance because it's that acceleration of force, right? So the only time it's four kilos if it's stationary. So when I'm using a, a dumbbell and I'm trying to actually make it hard against the muscle, I'm trying to use the actual four kilos and use that to get my, get my muscles to move it. If I did this, I could do it all day. The only part of the range that's challenged is the bottom and the rest of it floats. So just slowing down the tempo, just thinking about everything a hell of a lot more can make an exercise so much more difficult and so much more effective. So if you guys who are just stuck in the motion of doing rep after rep after rep, you really have to take a look at how you're performing it and think more about how you're moving that weight. It's all spine, it's all thoracic spine. Go on, Don't you lean back. Come on, Peter. Let's go. Stop leaning back. Move your body forward. Let me help you. Let's go. Don't move it. That's right. 
So that is the dumbbell lateral raise. Now we're gonna move on to the cable lateral raise. So if you look at the way Mike's set up, it's the direction of the cable is almost about 90 degrees at that bottom of the range of motion. So as far as how it's pulling against his arm, so it's gonna have the greatest amount of uh, resistance right about that position. So if you look so right there, that's 90 degrees. So that's gonna make that part of the exercise the hardest. As he comes through, go ahead and come up. The, actually, the cable's actually getting closer to his shoulder and closer to his arm, thereby decreasing the amount of resistance there. So that's a really, really well-designed resistance profile. Good. So notice that we have the cable slightly in front of him. So if you think of the angle of the cable as kind of a plane of movement, go ahead, Mike, go through the motion. So if we were to imagine like a pane of glass here, that's gonna be a good indication and extend it all the way through his arm uh, as, to, as to what part of the muscle is actually gonna be working. So we're gonna be working almost the back side of the lateral delt here. Let's go through a few reps. And the big thing Mike's focusing here that people do incorrectly is he's not thinking about lifting the weight up, he's thinking about driving it out. So he's not literally coming up, he's driving it as far out to the side as he can. And that's going to really change the way the muscles recruit it and take the trap out of it. So we don't want to have him elevate his shoulders at all, we want to think about driving out to the side. Good, so there's no strenuous movement in his body, which is very helpful to be on that bench. So as he fatigues, what's going to typically happen with most people as they fatigue is they're going to want to externally rotate. So they're going to want to rotate their hand and turn their bicep up and really use this front delt. And you can see the butt, now the front delt is doing all the work. So we really want to prevent that. So go ahead and internally rotate a little bit. And if you can internally rotate, if you maybe have a little bit of a shoulder problem, what I'll do is go ahead and uh, stretch down like I'd actually go ahead and throw like a pad under his back. And you see as me do this in my gym is we'll put, you know, four to six inch pad under his back to change the angle to work more of that back side of the rear delt. Um, so if you were just sit up and go like, right there, go ahead, can you do it right there? I'll support you. So that kind of thing. So we're just adding a little bit of a elevation and that completely changes the recruitment pattern. So for you, Mike, I'd actually have you elevated a little bit. So what you need to take into consideration is the angle at which your torso should be, okay? And that will vary from each individual on shoulder mobility and also more importantly, which part of the delt you wanna try and target. So it is a little bit more complex than just trying to think of, okay, am I hitting just the front delt or do I wanna hit the mid delt or do I wanna hit the rear delt, okay? There's a little bit more to it than that. Okay. Yeah, so if you look carefully, there's one, two, three, five, six, seven delt heads. So we want to hit particular ones. Like if I was to be critical of Mike's delt, I would say, well, this one needs to be a little bit bigger. This one needs to be a little bigger relative to this one. This one's massive. This one's massive. We want them all to be kind of balanced. Obviously, this is extremely high level. We want to kind of hit these three heads in the back. So that's all we're going to target. So we're getting all this stuff contracting really, really nicely. If you look at the angle of the resistance, his arm is in perfect alignment with the angle of resistance. And all of this is in alignment with the angle of resistance. So you can see where that muscle seems to be working hard. It's kind of where the indent is. That's where the greatest amount of work is happening. Now in many videos which I've made before, I talk about the importance of full range of motion and trying to complete a full range of motion when it comes to doing each of the reps. Yes, this is important, but you don't want to get too overly obsessed with completion of a full rep. Because if you're moving that tension away from the working muscle, then you're just making it way too easy for yourself, okay? Instead of thinking about focusing on completion of a rep, think about focusing on how you can actually make that muscle work and keep that specific muscle working without surrounding muscles taking over. By throwing reps up, you're getting all these other things involved and then building bad habits. So it's so important when you're learning something like this or you're trying to build a weak body part to make sure that you're keeping the tension where you want it and thinking about your nervous system and your brain going, this muscle firing, this muscle firing, this muscle firing, not all muscles firing. So after this session with Ben and going through these exercises in particular, it was a bit of an eye-opener. All of a sudden I found it much, much harder than it was previously when I was doing these variations of lateral raises. So tweaks to my form and more importantly, improvements to my training programming. I should definitely be doing more volume, particularly if it is an area which I want to focus upon. And it is, you know, relatively speaking to the rest of my body, my shoulders could do with a bit of improvement. So I'll be hitting them more frequently and I'll be doing more working sets. You know, typically in the past I'd be doing, you know, like a typical shoulder routine with another muscle group. I'd only do three to four working sets on lateral raise movements. Whereas now I'm going to do maybe seven to eight working sets and just get really, really good at executing just a small selection of exercises. And instead of going to the gym and starting off with overhead shoulder press, which is gonna be working the front delt, which relatively speaking to the rest of my delt is the strong point, I should be starting off the routine with the lateral raises. 
okay? And the same goes for you guys. If you have a weak muscle group, then really that should be taking priority at the start of your routine. So hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you, Ben, for helping me out with my lagging shoulders. Go check him out on his social media pages and on his website. The links will be in the description. And of course, don't forget to check out my training programs on mikethurston.co.uk. See you guys soon.